Hi friends, I'm Taylor. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up video. Got my comfy reading chair. I'm going to share all about the five fabulous books that I read in the month of December. So the first book that I read in the month of December was Faking Under the Mistletoe, which was just a very cute and charming Christmas story. Olivia, the main character, is like obsessed with Christmas and trying to get her boss, Asher, to love Christmas sort of as much as she does. And it was just, I love romance. It was very fun. Um, and I also really loved how the author tackled the subject of sexual assault and abuse with sort of in the workplace. It was great. 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5. Like, I just really had a fun time reading it. I will say it is an adult novel. There's some very steamy parts, but it was very enjoyable and a very fun Christmassy read. The next book that I read in December was 10 Rules for Faking It. This is a book that I got on NetGalley, um, but it did just come out this past week on Tuesday, and it, I loved the I loved the mental health representation in this book. The main character, she has pretty severe anxiety and while that's not like the focus of the story, she's just turned 30 and she's trying to figure out like she wants to have a romance but she's like, how do I find this? Like my, she just caught her boyfriend cheating on her on her birthday and that's just a hot mess and she's like what <laughs> what is the point of this but I loved the anxiety representation I loved how all of the side characters approached the mental illness as instead of something that made her her broken or flawed it was just something that was a part of her like I have brown hair her anxiety was just there and they sort of I feel felt like especially the love interest showed so much of like what I want more people who are part, who have partners, who have mental health to like treat these individuals because we're people. Hi, I have anxiety. <laughs> you didn't know. But I think it did a great job of helping like break down the stigma of what it is like to have anxiety for one, but also how people should approach others who have anxiety. So that one I gave four out of four and a half at five stars. It was great. So great. The next book that I read in December was The Inheritance Games, which is pitched as Knives Out meets Cinderella. So um, count me in, sign me up. Um, it is all about a girl who sort of comes literally from nothing. Her parents, her dad is a pretty deadbeat dad. She lives with her older sister because her mother passed away. And then she gets this random call to the principal's office where there's a boy and he's like, you have to come to my grandfather's will reading, you've been requested. And she's like, who's this guy? Like, what is going on? So she goes to this will reading of this man that she's never met, never heard of, to find out that she is the sole inheritor of pretty much everything, like billions and billions of dollars. She's like, what the heck? Um, but the grandfather likes to play games, which is why it's called the Inheritance Games. And this is kind of the last game that he left behind for his family and for her. And it was such a fun time. I could not put it down. <laughs> I need to buy it so that I can have my own copy because I would love to read it again already. Um, I will say that the very end, like the final reveal is kind of like, that's it. Like that's why she was picked. But then, then there's like this epilogue and it says these few things that I'm like, there's more to this than what we just found out. Like there has to be more based on what we just learned. So book two comes out later in 2021. I need it now. I'm ready for it now. If you love YA mysteries or just mysteries in general, if you liked Knives Out, highly recommend. I gave it four out of five stars. It was so fun. And the next book that I read in December was 10 Blind Dates. This was a reread for me. I read it for my online book club that I host, Hayes Book Club. 
and I listened to it last year and I like knew that I loved it but I forgot how much I loved it. I love this book. It's so Christmassy. It reminded me growing up and have, being like spending the holidays with all of my extended family. This book is hilarious. Like the dates that she has to go on are just hilarious. What happens in this book is that Sophie gets dumped right before Christmas so she goes to her grandmother's house and her grandmother concocts this wild plan to have different members of the family set her up on blind dates. Ten blind dates between when this happens and then New Year's Eve. And it's just hilarious. The family dynamics are so fun. The dates are hilarious. Like the writing is just great. It's just like a fun, fun time. I feel like I'll probably read this like every Christmas time or like even just randomly during the year because it just brings me so much joy. I will say there is a content warning for um, early birth um, and like preeclampsia, preeclampsia um, because her sister deals with that throughout the novel but it's just such a good novel it's just so good i love it so much that's all and the last book that i read in december was the king of elfoma learns learn how the king of elfoma learned to hate stories by holly black i loved being back in this world with Cardin and jude my goodness so this is book 3.5 it's a novella in the cruel prince folk of the air trilogy so you definitely do need to read the cruel prince the wicked king and the queen of nothing first but this book was so fun and like it's just let me show you beautiful there's just like stunning artwork i'm losing things my bookmark out of it that fell out but like it's just such a pretty book and this sort of, I mean, this just gives us more of a backstory on Cardin and why he is the way he is in The Cruel Prince. Um, it does start, like, at the end of where Queen of Nothing ends. And so, like, that's where it starts. And then it sort of flashes back and then goes back to the present. It was so fun. I read it in, like, an hour because it's just short and great. But if you haven't read The Cruel Prince trilogy, I highly recommend you do so. I will be rereading it in 2021, so I will definitely share all of my thoughts as I do that, but this just made me love Cardin even more than I already did, so five out of five stars. <laughs> Those are all of the books that I read in December. I would love to hear what you read this month and what your favorites were, so let me know in the comments down below. I post bookish videos every single week, so be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss a thing. Bye!